Hey, they're round and vulcanized, and without them, most of everything we drive will never move. We're talking tires in this Town Hall Academy. And at the end of the day, you know, that's the, the barriers that need to come through are equipment and training. I mean, the days of becoming in the tire business, just buying a tire machine and a balancer are over with. It's much more than that now. And the guy that doesn't realize that's the guy that's not, not, not going to make it, I don't think. Welcome, automotive aftermarketers, to a Remarkable Results Radio Town Hall Academy. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hello, friend. Carm Capriato, Town Hall Academy, episode 155. Hey, are you in the tire business in a big way or not? Have you shied away from tires for a myriad of reasons? Well, in this episode, my panel does a great job of covering the tire business from A to Z so you can look at how you do what you do as it relates to selling tires. Are you in it or not? A question for you. Is it time to think about your shop management system? If you're leaning toward a change, maybe it is time to transform your shop. Now, break away from your legacy SMS and embrace Shopware, shop management system. Now, Shopware can show you the way to increase profits from happier customers and a more efficient staff. Visit shop-ware.com slash demo for a free preview. Important, get to the app page on my website. Now, see, I created a short video explaining how to subscribe to every podcast that we create for you. It's even up on Remarkable Results page on Facebook. Now, you know we do three different genres. Remarkable Results, Town Hall Academy, and For the Record. Now, we recently split all three shows into their own stream, and you'll need to add Town Hall Academy and For the Record to your subscriptions and mark them as favorites. Remember, always on demand, free and available anywhere in the world. You know, many of you do not do tires. Some do it only if asked by the customer, and some, as two of my guests have, about 50% of their volume in rubber. The goal of this audio workshop is to set up opportunities and challenges for you to rethink your commitment to selling tires. Now, I've got two tire professionals, and these guys are in the tire business. Jay Malinowski from Faithful Tire and Auto in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and Chris Tolleson from 49 Tire in Richland, Mississippi. My third guest, Jim Fleischman. Now, he's from Automotive Alley in Arcade, New York, and is a typical service center that sells tires but does not promote them. We talk margins, alignments, one-stop shopping, banner programs, and even road hazards, among other really good topics. Find the talking points at remarkableresults.biz slash A155. Okay, they go round and round, and maybe tires are the perfect specialty to round out your business for a sales boost in 2020. All of these guys sell tires. Jay and Chris are tire people. Jim is, you know, a general automotive with with tires. So many great talking points. I'm going to start with you, Chris. Do customers take advantage of buying tires from you and making you a single source supply? We started out as a tire store. I mean, and and that's what we are. We use the tire business uh, to get our service. I mean, that's the way uh, we were trained uh, eons ago from the likes of Firestone is that's how, you know, you got your customers in the store was by selling those tires. So definitely, I mean, uh, we run about 50-50 uh, tires to service. So Had you always been there? Uh, no, we had to uh, we had to grow that. It, uh, earlier on, much earlier on, it was probably more uh, uh, 70-30 tires to service. And uh, over the years, we've got it pretty equal to equal. Some years it pops the service over tires, but it's pretty, you know, average 29 years, it's 50 So I just want everyone to understand that Chris and Jay are tire people because, and I think, Chris, wasn't your dad in the work? Yeah, you, he worked for Firestone. Worked for for Firestone. You, so, so if you read between the lines, what you're probably not hearing that I want to tell you that you should be listening to is that these tire guys, Chris and Jay, needed to get into the service business to round out their business. So here I take the service guys and say, well, we're not getting into the tire business, but the tire guys are getting into your business. And so why shouldn't you be considering being stronger in the tire business? So thanks for kind of opening that up. 
entire technology, Jay, I, I, I thought it so fascinating, the thing you said to me. And I want to bring this up in the front side of this show and, and give some give us a, a little taste of what's going to be some great advances in the future. And because we love technology and what we do in our business. Well, the consumer vehicle is going to have a high demand from the dealer and as well as the vehicle itself. Um, you know, investing in our training, investing in our uh, equipment is one thing, but the technology in the tire, nothing's changed in a tire in 40 years, maybe 30, um, out of everything else on the vehicle. You know, we have ADAS, traction control, ABS brakes. doesn't matter if the little four by six patch on the ground is, you know, useless. Uh, technology now we're seeing sensors and tires that will relay back traction to the autonomous vehicle or to the computer in the vehicle uh, that'll tell what kind of traction is in the ve- or on the ground. Um, it'll tell the vehicle how to handle and steer, and that's you know some of the biggest technology that a tire has ever seen. Yeah, it's going to be uh, when that happens. I, I noticed last week that Bridgestone had something at, at Las Vegas at the big consumer uh, technology uh, convention that was they were bringing out. So it's going to make it fun. It's also going to make it very expensive. And I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, but uh, typically, um, what we see and not may not be the case in. in your guys' businesses, but um, typically in, in most of these larger tire stores, they're trying to bring in a lot of entry-level um, technicians. And so with the entry-level technicians, they, they a lot of stores still have that mentality of you just put somebody cheap labor on changing tires, and it's not the case anymore. We have to have so much education and the tooling, you know, like Jay said, um, to, to change and or tell the car that you change the tires today. It's, it's, it's quite an investment on a, on a, on a shop level to try to stay up on top of making sure we, we have our people educated and we're using the right tools to, to tell the car, Hey, we did service you. So do you guys think if you look down the road with the advent of the heaviness of the diagnostics and the technology and the tire today, is that going to give you guys some bigger, better margins? Do you think? No, I think the tire business, I, I, I think if we can make it up on the labor, but the tires themselves, it's become such a commodity. I, I, I have no faith in increasing the margin of the tire itself. And, and I, that's not, that's traditionally not been the case over the last 10 years. The only way we were able to buy, get the margins anywhere were to uh, find some, uh, I wouldn't say no name, but some secondary and third brand tires uh, to get our margins like it. Like you wouldn't make it off the name brands. Hey, so to everyone who's on with us with Zoom, there's a Q&A segment uh, in, in the webinar here. And if anyone wants to ask a question of our of our team, please do. The biggest argument that we constantly hear is, listen, I don't want to play with tire margins. I just don't want to play with them. I mean, I'm really doing well with everything else. You can't convince me to get into the tire business. Um, and, and our job on this webinar is to do that, is to convince someone irrelevant of the gross margin percents, but why the tire business works in the automotive aftermarket. Last week, we did a show on cash flow. Greg Bunch was on there, and ironically, he just brings up this whole world about tires. And if you're not selling tires, he says you're, you're crazy. We try hard to make sure that uh, in our industry, in our in our um business model that, I mean, we offer tires and we offer all the brands of the tires, um, but we try to make sure that if we can keep them in-house because we don't want them in uh, Chris's store or Jay's store, you know, Um, no offense guys, but I mean, nobody wants to see someone go somewhere else for what we can offer them. Um, You know, we, we try to be competitive with our prices. And if somebody says, Hey, you know, you're, you're a little high on the tire. Well, here's, we, we try to show them the value that we, that we can offer. Um, we try to tell them, you know, and, and at least train them on if there's something wrong with the tire, we can take care of you. You might get it cheaper online. There's, there's no, there's nobody on the backside of that that's going to help you like we are and, or the same thing, Chris or Jay, you would be saying the same, same type of thing. But, um, if you're not doing tires, I think, um, you're, you're doing a disservice. If you're in the repair business and, and you know, you have 
if you have the alignment rack, I think it was one of the things that we spoke of. And I don't know how you don't do tires if you have an alignment right. rack. And it just kind of it's uh, it's bizarre. It, we've got several independent uh, smaller uh, specialty shops that use us for tires and they use us for alignments. And it, it blows me away that they would send one of their customers to somewhere else to get it done. And then a lot of times it's not done like we've got the car for two days. We're going to bring it down and get you to throw some tires on. It, they send their customer. Just go down yeah. there. And, speak, and, yep. and I mean, from a tire guy, that's or just in business. That's just that's hard for us, for me to get my brain around. I know the dentist sends uh, the kid to go to the orthodontist or he sends it to the oral surgeon. I guess that's the way that shop's looking at it. But uh, from my standpoint, I don't see how that works. I, I, I don't, I don't like, uh, I don't like when I have to send something away. Uh, I agree. I love the fact that we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Bob Ward says, uh, you're talking about small margins. How do you deal with people purchasing tires online and getting better pricing than you can give? Being part of a, a banner program is probably one of the biggest advantages. Uh, there are many manufacturers like Tirecraft where three levels of banner programs you can be in, um, which gives you great buying power, markability, uh, and warranties. And you know, that consumer buying off online or the big box store, they may not have nationwide coverage and warranty. They may not have uh, markability uh, regarding rebates and things like that. Um, some of the banner programs offer great volume and rebates where some, or some companies, that's all they play for are those year-end rebates. And that's, you know, how they compete. I, I agree completely on the uh, being under somebody's banner, and uh, I, you know I think many times we can we we are there a lot of times with the online guys once they factor everything in. It's just a lot of times the customer uh, just defers to that all automatically thinking that the whatever dot com is going to be a better price. And I think there's uh, to, for some customers there's a uh, avoiding a hassle uh, type of thing too, that they don't want to deal with a tire salesman type thing. They just want to get to the end run. But uh, I think there's some of that too. But most of the time, if we get the opportunity, I think we can uh, compete if we decide to. On our end, we just didn't educate the customer well enough to let them know that they can get those tires through us. And there might be a little bit difference in price. They may not even have the problem with the price at that point. It's just educate them to let them know that, hey, we can get that for you and we can have it tomorrow or we can have it in a day and a half. Uh, oh, geez, I, I would have got it from you guys. I didn't know. And so the, we find that a lot that that happens in our case and, and shame on us, but we may not have done a good enough job letting them know what we, what we offer in regards to tires. A question just came in. It was ironic that you said that. Do you advertise tires or just sell to current customer base? So, you know, isn't this communication gap something we talk about all the time? We bought a brand new scanner and we've, we failed to tell our customers that, you know, now we are quote unquote expert. And yes, we do sell tires, even though you don't have that smelly rubber, you know, waiting room. Yeah, yeah. we don't, we don't advertise uh, to answer that question. We don't, we don't advertise. We don't push that we're doing that. It's, you know, uh, when a vehicle comes in for our multi-point, multi-point inspection, and it needs tires, we put together a quote of what's on the vehicle and then ask them those questions. Do you like what you have? How long have you had them? And uh, if they don't like what they have, then here's some recommendations. But we try not to steer somebody from something that they had on there that they were happy with. Um, I mean, we all know where that's going to go. It's, it's somebody's going to come back and go, hey, these didn't get the mileage that you suggested. And there's a lot of factors in that that, that uh, affect that. But we try to help out where we can, I, I, I get, but we don't advertise and shame on us, but I don't want to advertise and, and fight with Chris and, and Jay and, and these type of shops over, over the tire business. I just want to make sure that people are aware that we can uh, put tires on their car if, if we have it in for service. Are you guys heavy tire uh, advertisers, Chris, Jay? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, in our case, I mean, I started out my shop five and a half years ago wanting to be mainly tire, a little bit of dabble in mechanical. And I was lucky to get two really good technicians and I pivoted at the day one that we started and we became more of a mechanical and tire shop. 
Uh, we do, we dabble, I won't say dabble, but we do some commercial work. My background is commercial tires as well. Uh, we do a little bit of commercial work for some select customers and we're around that 50-50, but we advertise heavily to get those new clients in and, you know, they come in for a flat repair. Um, sometimes we'll give away a flat repair and it's that loss leader, get the customer in for that wheel limit. I've had customers that have been with me for four or five years that didn't know we also did mechanical work. It just assumed mm. we did tires. Yeah, just opposite for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah just opposite, 100%. I mean, yesterday I was on the phone and uh, doing going over an estimate. I said, you know, the also is overdue for an oil change by the stickers. Y'all do oil changes? And I think, you know, we've been doing oil changes just for 29 years now. But yeah, the tire business, we advertise heavily. Uh, we have to remind people that we uh, can fix their brakes or change their oil uh, more than we have to remind them that we're selling tires. I think in the industry, we have built this image of different blocks that you, you, you know, you're going to a specialist. If you're going to a doctor, you got to go to a knee specialist, you go to a heart specialist. And so I think in the industry, we have these, these individual blocks that have been built that our customer base thinks that they have to go. I have a tire. I go to a tire store. I have a engine problem. I have to go to somebody that's good with electrical uh, or engine or alignment. Well, holy cow. If, if they sell tires, they got to do alignments. That's the, the image that uh, I think that they have in their head. You know what I think? Organic social media that would feature a picture of you changing tires or storing tires or doing something with a tire may have an awful lot of value if you're not going to advertise like you don't, Jim, and you, you don't make it a big thing. It just happens because you're doing a good job of inspecting the vehicle. I just hear about all these great organic opportunities. I never hear about tires <laughs> maybe this is a, an eye-opener here well i used to say um you know we're in the customer service industry we just happen to sell tires and uh you know a lot of people you just kind of see them you know what else can you do for me you know they like the service you're providing for them um and then like tire storage is one of the best things probably in the last five to ten years that uh have done well you know we've got a couple hundred of them here as well uh, and it, you know, you see that customer, at least in my area, twice a year, um, you know, winter, fall or winter and uh, springtime. Yeah, that is so cool the way you have that built in because of the severe cold and, and snow you have up in Saskatchewan. Chris, yeah. uh, you see your customer. I mean, you see your customers often because you're doing mechanical, but the tire business is different in the south. It is. Uh, in, the, in the south, uh, our winter time is our slow time. Uh, we pretty much hunker down from uh, November through uh, February, hold our breath till we can get spring and everybody gets ready to go on trips. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, um, we, we live for uh, April through uh, September uh, pretty much. Yeah, we're balmy today. We're loving the weather. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, I, I know we, we should do some weather forecasting here in a bit, but we had a question to talk about gross margin dollars per cent. How do you set your pricing? Uh, make sure you stay competitively priced. L let's do a little math, guys. You know, share if you would be willing to, you know, how you, how you look at the tire sale. <laughs> There's been a lot to be made of the, you know, the old steps to the tire sale. You know, up here, uh, what's benefiting the customer and what their plans are. Uh, we're seeing the advent, you know, 60 to 70 percent of people are changing over to winter tires where it's not mandatory or some provinces are starting to become mandatory um but you know what the customer wants we're finding now that the premium tire uh, the margins have gone down a lot um down another probably 10 percent, i would say in the last two years just because the large companies your costcos your um, dealers uh, are using now tires as a loss leader because they are losing money because of extended maintenance periods on their oil changes. They're not seeing their customers much. Now they're using tires as the leader to get them back in. Um, so, you know, as Chris had mentioned earlier, you know, that's tier two, tier three, even tier four tires, you get a little bit more margin on the customer's happy, they're paying less, but you want to make sure that you get the right tire for that right vehicle. Yeah, uh, from a, a, a margin standpoint, uh, it's, it's just what Jay said. Uh, the, the the higher end, the the tier one tire lines, there's just that profit margin has evaporated. So mentally, when you're 
uh, putting your pricing together. If you're going to be competitive with the big box stores, you have to autom- you know, put that uh, end of the year kickback into your into your mind that, you know, if in my case, uh, the, the big tier one lines that were heavy, uh, Bridgestone, Firestone, were heavy uh, in the mass uh, Michelin, BF Goodrich, that we put that rebate that we are uh, uh, going to assume that we're going to come in. It's it's mathematically that's a part of our daily thought process, which it used to not be. So you, yeah, okay, I get it. So you're looking at that raw, uh, you know, ten, fifteen dollars you may be making on a tire. <sighs> You know, okay, learn to accept that. And then you say, well, there may be another five bucks over here and there may be an incentive over there. And so you're walking around with the only peace of mind you could have is by considering what's underneath the covers. Where it used to be not as relevant, that was kind of like the the cherry on top, so to speak. Now it is is really a part of your business plan now, or at least is here anyway. You got to make sure your, you know, your, your proper steps, you know, your multi-point inspections are there because, you know, if you're on those tier one, tier two tires, you know, you want to make sure, you know, you make sure that customer is handled with alignment, handled with the proper inspections, you know, and that callback, uh, getting those customers back through the door for that oil change or whatnot. So am I willing to accept that? Let me just pick a number, call it 20 bucks a tire. And I don't know if that's grossed up or total net. It doesn't matter. But I got a four tire sale. I'm going to make 80 bucks. Does that include mounting, balancing and and, and all the installation and everything, guys? Not in my case. We mount and balance is extra. Oh, mounting and balancing is extra. Okay. From from the research we've done, and again, we're not not a large tire store. We, we, in, in my... Uh, case, I believe we're, we we sell four to five hundred tires a year. So I, in, I'm small in in regards to selling tires. I don't know where you guys numbers wise are of yearly sales and tires, but uh, typically we're from what I see talking with everybody and and knowing the industry. You you, you commonly see CARM is thirty to fifty dollars a tire is, is I would say would be what we're commonly seeing. Wow. Would you like to move to Buffalo, Chris? <laughs> well, if he's, if, he's, uh, if he's making that on the raw tire, there's two ways to look at it. If that's what he's making uh, or somebody is attempting to make that on the raw tire in my world, then he is a guy that is, is going to be comfortable selling his five to 800 tires a year. He's making his price, he's taking care of his customer. He's happy, but he's not going to grow that business. Uh, you know, yeah, we're he, not, we're not trying to be a Chris or a, yeah. a Jay. And again, these are our, our business. We do a lot of Euro Asian um, market. It's, it's, it is a different market. Uh, Jim, let me ask you a question. Are you happy when you have a tire opportunity? Are you closing 80, 90% of the quotes you give? We're probably sixty to seventy percent of the of the quote that we give out. It would be, hey, here's here's for us to protect you and yeah. and and be part of this deal. We would be in this range. I, you know, could we make some changes? You I, could probably, lower your margin and gain another few percent, but think of the money he's making on those five hundred. We're a different. I just do it differently. I, I guess I don't know how to explain. That's why that. you're here. You're, you're really the ying to the to Chris and Jay's yang as far as the, being really big in the tire business. Now, now let's talk about that low margin, high volume thing. It works for both Chris and Jay in a really big way. So when you look at the parts side or the you know the, the of not the parts but the parts labor, uh, the general auto repair side of your business, is that helping to make up the margin you need to run your business? I would say so. Um, and I think in Canada, I think we enjoy a little bit more margin on, on our tires, uh, just the way the competitiveness, uh, especially in our area, you know, maybe in the larger centers, uh, it's a lot tighter. Um, but, you know, just increasing your customer service helps with those margins and, you know, gets the customer back through. Because, I mean, we're customers, we're selling two sets of tire to a year. So, I mean, some guys look at it as like, if I'm selling two sets of tires to one customer a year, they'll bring down their margins because they're that much happier, right? Uh, Great discussion. Interesting. Um, There's no right or wrong answer. I so appreciate that. 
<laughs> hey, Carm here. Now, think about your shop management system. Isn't it the center of your business? And most of us are running on systems that are decades old, and you know who you are. It's time to change and get the benefits that a modern system can bring to your business. Shopware Shop Management is a cloud-powered management system that gives your staff and your customers the end-to-end digital experience that they expect. With Shopware, you can see every job and view work updates in real time. And you can manage your shop from anywhere with any device. And that's becoming more important than ever. You'll see your customers interact with digital work orders and buy services from you more often with less effort. You can earn more parts profit with just the click of one button and with less paper, too. You'll also get improved efficiency from your staff. Do this. Request a live tour of Shopware at shop-ware.com. Look, it's time to make the switch and get started making more money with a powerful modern business tool designed to solve your biggest challenges. Let's talk about road hazard. Someone asked the question, self-insure road hazard or premium tire service plans. Uh, the tire guys, you you got to have some really exciting road hazard options for your customers. That's that's you know uh, talking about pr- protecting your margin you know it's uh very uh our sales people are held very accountable to one are you selling road hazards uh warranties on those tires are you getting an alignment or alignment check to to offset uh the low growth that they may make on that set of uh, michelins or that set of firestones for that matter uh so uh road hazard is done in house uh, we use one of our banner programs to take care of uh, when you're out of town. Uh, so, uh, but we uh, we do uh, the road hazard and uh, is a huge part of our our, our business plan. The, the manufacturers and more importantly the distributors have gotten a hold of that. So, we're finding more and more distributors are putting road hazard warranty on some of their product, maybe for a year, maybe for the life of the power pending, and uh, that helps helps us out as well. In some cases, you can double dip in that. You'll have your own shop road hazard warranty. That manufacturer will have the road hazard warranty, and even the supplier may have something. So you're protected in many ways. There's a uh, comment here uh, from Chris. How many jobs in a shop can make a hundred buck, hundred dollar bill faster than installing a set of tires? And 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 I know that that you guys are in that vo- high volume action, you know, C note, if you will. I don't think you call that up there, Jay, but we call it a C note down here. <laughs> and, and and that that's a that that's a great strategy to have. And I I I can't understand why someone wouldn't want to sell tires unless they looked at the technology and the new tire changers and the you know the the the, the new wheels and the rims. And then, oh my God, I got to buy an alignment machine because it's the only way I could really round out my service. Is are those stumbling areas? They weren't for us because we bought an alignment machine day one. You know that was that. But think about it from the from the independence perspective, Jim. You have an alignment machine, right? Yep. Okay, and and you have the latest you know tire changing equipment. Yeah, we're a hunter shop, so. All right, so you got you got everything there, Jay. Do you think that's a that's a barrier to entry? Yeah, um, well, what I'm seeing too now with the technology and vehicles uh, becoming so complex that your general automotive guys are not investing in their OE scan tools and their, you know, great alignment machines. They're going down and just focusing on your underhood stuff, your tires, your brakes, your suspension. Then they got to invest in the, the tire machine, the balancer. Um, you know, I always say you don't have to have the best balancer. You just have the right guy operating the tool. And at the end of the day, you know, that's the, the barriers that need to come through or equipment and training. I mean, the, the days of becoming in the tire business, just buying a tire machine and a balancer are over with. It, it's much more than that now. And the guy that doesn't realize that's the guy that's not, not, not going to make it, I don't think. My friend Bill Hill out in Ohio says, when I sell four tires, I make about $260 on a set of tires between mounting balance and alignment. You guys find that to be high? Uh, nope. God bless him. <laughs> okay. So Bill, if you could do, if you're, if uh, Bill, I'm sure you're still listening, uh, type into the chat box, how many tires a year you would be selling? Like Jim says, he, he sells uh, about 500. And, and I guess that may be the satisfaction level that, you know, shop owners get, listen, 500 times, do the math. It's, I don't know, 10, 15% of your business, Jim, but you're at least committed and offering it as a one stop shop. 
and and you're making the offer to the customer. And they cho- just like I don't care what it is. If you're doing a break job, they can find a price online. If your value proposition, your trust factor is there, I can't imagine why tires wouldn't be, you know, part of the ensemble that you sell. Jim's plan is awesome. As long as he's taking care of his customers, uh, he sounds like he's got a very reputable business. He's got a, he's got some niche specialty business. He just as long as he's got that option. I mean, you don't, I don't I don't know that being uh, go f- full bore into the tire business is necessarily the way to go. You've got to be ready to be very competitive uh, if you're going to go into it. But as long as you offer it, I just can't under uh, I don't see how a shop that does a quality inspection that uh, your show harps on uh, and uh, can't, doesn't do that. I, I just can't say, hey, you need to go to uh, ABC Tire and get you a set of tires. No, I, I'm, you're here right now. Most people yeah. don't want to go to a second stop. They Get me taken care of. Get me out of here. I agree. If you're doing your digital inspections and, and um, if you're doing a good job, most of these people aren't going somewhere else. But I... I guess I, I don't know how to say, but I some people just, they're going to, I always get my tires at X and X tire store and they're going to go there. Doesn't matter what, I mean, they've been our customers forever and they still go there and get their tires. I, it, I don't, I can't answer that. Creatures of habit. Yes. Uh, Andy Massell says, I have found that a lot of people think tires are not profitable in the country. It is one of the most profitable services per labor hour that we offer. High gross profit dollars per labor hour, low margin. This is okay. And that's probably how you guys look at it, right, Chris, Jay? Yeah, if you know what you're doing, like, especially now with the increase of high performance tires, low profiles, you know, you can charge more for the balancing uh, or the changeovers and whatnot. You know, you've got a truck with 22 inch, you know, instead of being 22 inch tires, wheels, instead of being that 15, $20 mountain balance. Now it's a 35, $40 mountain balance, you know, and that increases your labor just from there. And if you've got a very tr- well-trained counter staff that will recognize that up front, that's probably one of our biggest problems is that we don't recognize that on the front end that we should for that, whatever tire charge a little more than normal. Uh, that's, that's a training thing on, on the counter that we uh, constantly mm-hmm. are working on. Yeah. I mean, we all know if, 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 uh, maybe a poor example, but if a Corvette comes rolling in, you better be making more money on that tire and the tire mounting and balancing yes. than a typical standard, you know, 17 inch tire. I, we all know the pain that goes into making that, that happen. So I, we, we charge for it, I, and that happens. Great. Uh, someone says, Carm, is this recorded to watch later? Yes, you can watch this on Facebook. You can um, all weekend. In fact, it gets repurposed. This video and the audio gets repurposed next Thursday, right inside the remarkable the Town Hall Academy podcast. Guys, you brought up banner and how important having a banner program is. Let's just consider so that the world knows Napa Auto Care is, is a banner for an independent shop. You're a tire craft distributor, Jay, or a tire banner member for Tirecraft. I was so honored to be in Vancouver and Calgary last year to hang with you guys. It was it was a blast. Chris, what's your banner? Uh, we've got two. We're Tire Pros, which is through American Tire. Uh, and then uh, we're also a Bridgestone Firestone affiliate dealer. So uh, we're trying to make two gods happy. We're very much like the Tire <laughs> Pros. Uh, we, the sister company of ETD is NTD up here in Canada. We were actually supposed to have a AGM with Tire Pros a couple of years ago, um, you know, just to be aligned with ourselves and talk shop between the two different areas. That would be cool. And, and so what you're saying is there's this North American connection between all of these groups, uh, Jay and, and Chris. And so that would be the recommendation. So Jim, the recommendation to Jim would be, Jim, um, get a distributor and and, and become part of a tire program because you'll be smarter. There's there's deals to be made. You, you, there, there's stuff to learn, and they'll, they can even help you deck your place out to look and feel more like a tire shop without really hurting your own personal brand, right? Not to toot their horn too much, but Tire Pros has an 
is excellent with their marketing. I mean, they take a store that maybe has always been a tire store or wanting to get in the tire business and do a hell of a good job of getting them up to speed to uh, to to market themselves more as a tire store, if that's you know where a guy wants to go. And even if they don't want to go there, there's still an awful lot of benefit. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. So, Jim, we put you on the spot. Would you ever consider something like that? I wouldn't say that it's out of the out of the question. I think um, I don't know if we have one specific brand that we sell. Well, I, I, as far as a winter tire, we we do a lot of Nokian uh, tires. Um, you know, based on what we have for winter, just a high performance, great winter tire. I don't know, Jay, if what your top winter brand is, but uh, I'm not married specifically to a brand. I, should we be? Chris, Jay, I, I don't know that answer. Um, I mean, I was, from what you're saying, it, you're. But I don't think you have to be, Jay, if you join a banner program, right? No, I mean, you may stick to your brands because you know uh, your counter staff know what they're dealing with, especially a full line brand. But the other thing is your local supplier uh, will have that stuff in stock. So you know when you're selling, it's going to be in stock. Um, yeah. No, that's important. Gonna, that's important yeah. to us. I, if we're going to sell something, I want to make sure that it's a readily available tire. If something were to happen, I it again, it's it protects us. It it helps us uh, take care of our our clients, and that that's important. I I stress that if 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 we can't, if there's not many in stock, we're not going to try to sell that tire because it it means either they're going away uh, or something's going to happen, and we won't be able to get a hold of that tire. So I we try to steer away from that. Guys like and, the, and, Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chris. In our case, we've been a Firestone dealer from day one, 29 years. We look, we smell a lot like a Firestone store, whether it's here or in Saskatchewan or upstate New York. But, you know, once you get inside, we're a lot more than just a Firestone store. And and, and most customers now, and most, let me rephrase that, most dealers can't just survive on one tire line. Where 20 years ago, 90% of what we sold was Firestone. It's, you know, totally changed in the in the last 29 years. You know, when I think of the aftermarket and, you know, the competition of the dealer and the volume that comes to the aftermarket out of warranty, 70% has been the number I've, I've recently read. And I think about the dealership as a competitor. I think of the tire store as a competitor, yet... Uh, we we do so well uh, when we compete against the dealer. Why isn't the independent doing so well as they compete against the tire store? Any comments, any thoughts, Chris or Jay? I think that the independent repair shop can be the most awesome place. That Most of those guys have a trust factor that, uh, that a lot of us would kill for. Uh, and and sometimes I, I don't even know if they just realize that. I mean, uh, that... Uh, uh, they 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 have so much potential. I think it could come down to you know your independent shops are tight for space, tight for manpower, so they may may not want that A B tech doing tires, uh, and they may not have those you know C tech, Loop tech tire guys um, who are qualified to work, and you know, and some shops don't want to do that because of that space and manpower. If you don't have the the square footage to to put the uh, tire equipment in. Yeah, I, I agree. Definitely, Jay. No doubt. I, I heard business model. That's what I heard. You, you have to almost not only change how you do, who you hire, the equipment you have, but you have to change your man, mentality to, to do that. And I guess it's not hard to think. In your case, Jim, you do 500 tires uh, times, uh, pick a number. You can almost figure out what kind of volume you could add to your shop. And with gross margin dollars, we pay bills with gross margin dollars and maybe to join a banner program. I've really enjoyed uh, where this where this has gone. Oh, there was a question I wanted to ask about, uh, you know, like Tire Rack, the, the dot coms and, you know, that by the and I come into your place. I would say the majority of the independents will not install a part bought from somebody brings in. There's a lot of reasons why not to. Uh, Jay, Chris, do you, do you uh, I'll install uh, that that market's happening and I mean you can't fight it I will install I mean because if a customer buys a set of tires from one dealer last year and then wants to come to me and install the winter tires again to me I don't look at it as 
buying a new set from online because I agree. they need to resell. And then you can also, now I can attract a new customer. Uh, they may buy a second set from me or they may get that alignment. They may get that oil change or anything else. I mean, you can't fight it. You <clears throat> just have to work with it. I agree. I think tires are uh, that one uh, part on the car that when somebody walks in and goes, I have four tires that I need to get put on my car. Uh, you don't know if they just bought them from Craigslist or the marketplace or online. You have no idea where they came from. You can ask the questions. We look at the date codes, see, see, are they good tires? Is it something we can put on? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to put them on. It's totally different than buying your rock auto parts and, and putting them on. I, I think, I think that helps answer that or put some feedback into that. It's, it's part of the business now. Uh, it, it, uh, I generally am not the one that gets to wait on the guy from tire rack. Cause I just want to go off on him. So they like go, Chris, go back to your office while we do this set of tires that this guy's getting. Cause I want to go up there and just like, you know, put him on the stand and question him and why he did that and why he didn't give me the opportunity. Oh. And, uh, and so I generally get told to get out of the way and, and go kick a tire in the back or something. I, I always say I'm a consumer too. I mean, I'm always looking for the good deal. I shop on Amazon, so I don't blame anybody, right? I have to tell you, this is uh, this is one of the most interesting Q&As we've had in a long time on the Town Hall Academy. Uh, Bill Hill, my great friend from Ohio, wrote, and he said, being a part of a tire program gives you the ability to have a complete line of tires and expensive to high-end performance tires. He says he'll install tires from outside source. He says he charges 170 bucks to install them. Uh, how does that rate to you, Chris, Jay, Jim? That's, uh, that's good money. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we, we're, uh, on average, we're about 120. Oh, uh, with alignment. I'm sorry, 170 with alignment. That That's... A, uh, that's... Uh, still okay? We're, mm, uh, we would be in that probably average about 200 with, with an alignment. Okay. And I would do that every day, all day, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, Carm, I would, you know, we'd be with alignment to over 200. We're in that same range, Jay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you, you see that customer, you got their information, you can get them back in the shop. You might find brakes, you might find tie rod, something like that too, right? So, I mean, if somebody comes in, if they're high performance, more money. Uh, but if you're general, small 15 inch tires, simple enough. So you don't look at them as a purely transactional customer. You, you're looking to say, hey, uh, we, we may have something here. Let's give this a shot. Uh, I, I think as uh, in business owners, we're always trying to prove the customer that we're worthy. And uh, that's a customer that we want to say, we want to be a part of your one of your options when you need tires. Don't just defer to the dot com. Uh, my friend Andy uh, Masol again says, "Is a great. This is a great comment. I just totally lost my screen here." He says, "Most customers from Tire Rack often call the shop prior to ordering, and this is a good opportunity to convert them to buying your tires versus Tire Rack. <laughs> that, that's that's an interesting idea. Hey, I'm thinking of buying tires. Would you install them? Time out. <laughs> Let's talk. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people will want that. You know." that advice and what would be the right tire for them and then turn around and save that 20, 40, 50 bucks on a set of four tires and go buy them at, you know, the big box store online or whatnot. I mean, that does happen, but I mean, I think it happens in everything. It's so interesting the way we look at installing a, a part and, and worrying about the warranty and, you know, the diagnostic part of it and all that. So, and I totally get that part side uh, but this tire thing is, is so interesting. Bill Hill says, once they're in my database, I market to them until they die. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> hey, listen, you you guys were right. You know, before we actually turned on the uh, the live button here, we said, hey, uh, we're never going to do this in an hour or in 40 minutes. And you're right. <laughs> we didn't. But it was really eye-opening. I, I thank you all so, so much. I want to give each of you a final word, if you will. Uh, Jim, uh, it'll, it'll be Jim, Chris, and Jay in that order. Jim, any, any final thoughts to the industry about tires? As a final thought, no, I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to uh, sit on with Jay and Chris. And, and I think that um, we, we have a different business than a large tire store. So, uh, and I, I always look at it every day as a learning experience. If we can make our business better, and and I, I got a I got a lot of uh, content from 
from you two guys and, and Carm, obviously yourself. You were here because you're the typical guy that, you know, is in our audience that, you know, the, the, the independent shop owner. And the reason that Jay and Chris were here is that because they're at that way up, you know, three or four levels up and there's so much, they were so kind to come on and tell us what's going on in their world. And, you know, not that we're all going to be in that world, but it's always, you know, I learn always from the top dogs, you know. Yeah, no, I, we're, we're grateful to have you, Carmen. Very good. Hey, that. Chris, Chris, how about you? I, I think I said you were next. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I would think as an independent trying to make the decision to move into tires, you want to do whatever you can to benefit, one, your customer, and two, your own business. And find that find that spot, get in line, get on board with a, uh, a banner program, a good distributor so that you have options as far as product goes. And, and they want to make you successful. They want to help you with your margins. They want to help you market your brand, your name and, t- and get you into the tire business that more than anything, uh, they want that. Uh, so, you know, get, if you, if, if you're on the fence, then if, if, you know, realize that you're not always going to make, uh, huge amounts of money in the tire business, but uh, you you can be successful in the tire business, uh, just like we can be successful in the service business. We had to learn a new lingo. Uh, we have to you know that constantly. What Jim said about learning every day. That's what we do. Of course, we're not learning in t- tire sizes. We're learning, yeah, uh, whatever new thing Hyundai or or whoever came up with. Great, great wise words, uh, Jay. Right. I, I echo a lot what Chris says there with the banner programs, uh, but I think there's no other way to expand your business, um, you know, even grow to multi-store locations uh, to add tires and whatnot. Uh, to be able to increase your services to your customers, there's nothing better. Um, you know, that ability to see those customers year after year, month, you know. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. I, I think uh, we, we, we learned an awful lot. Uh, Jay Malinowski, Faithful Tire and Auto, Tire Craft in Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan. And sunny Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Sunny. I want to come see you in yeah. August. Oh, I yeah. it's beautiful up yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Chris Tolleson, 49 Tire, Richland, Mississippi. Uh, Jim Fleischman, Automotive Alley, Arcade, New York, here in Western New York. Guys, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.